Good afternoon, everybody. A lovely summer's afternoon. Well, sunny afternoon, at least. This afternoon. Got a job with a difference today. You can see the building behind me, no doubt. It's Cheddleton Station on the Churnit Valley Railway. Because today we're going to be having a little look at the Churnit Valley, the River Churnit. We can't get alongside it very much, but we'll see it just briefly. Plus I've got a special little job to do, so we're on, we're on Daisy today. If you can see in the background, my sidecar outfit. Got a very special passenger on board, so you'll see what it's all about in a few minutes time. Had to get on anyway. See you later. Well, we'll try again. As I said, this is Cheddleton Station in front of us. On the preserved Churnit Valley Railway. Nothing much happening at the moment. Um, I'm not sure if anything, I would imagine there's going to be some activity over the bank holiday weekend. Uh, Covid restrictions probably should allow um, some sort of operation anyway. Um, these guys here are making a really good job of it, keeping this place running. It's only a short line effectively, but it runs alongside the river chair and it's to the whole of its distance. Uh, we'll be having another look at it. We'll see you briefly again. Um, Inside. But for the time being, we're going to move away from the from the river um, through the uh, sidecar outfit. We don't lean around the corner, physically steer around the corner, which is, it takes some getting used to. It's one of those Marmite situations, you either love them or you hate them. And I get a lot of fun out of this sidecar outfit, I really do. Looking out into the sun again. Take a right turn here and we'll go through, through Belmont on our way across to the village of Ipstones. Yeah. Lots of pickup trucks around today. It's almost as if they're out to get us. on the right in the distance, it's the middle distance, that's Belmont House. And this was quite a well-to-do place. It's still owned by well-heeled people. This was a this was a little country estate at one time we're coming down to. It's Belmont. Down on the right of us here is Belmont Pool. This was a it's an artificially built pool. It was part and parcel of the grounds of Belmont Pool. Ornamental really more than anything. And there's a little wooded valley down to the right of us. It actually drops back down into the Churnit Valley again, but there's no road through there so we can't get down there.
nice sort of road this is. Probably winding balance. It's very popular with people coming for a run in the country. As you can see. And of course a walk in the country. This is Ipstones. Lovely village of Ipstones. You can't see the shop. Up to the left of us there's a shop, there's a butcher shop, there's a couple of pubs. It's such a small village, it's really well appointed for services. down to the village of Frog Hall. Frog Hall. On the right. And this is where my, my employment history first really kicked off. My first job was for three months working for Woolworths, supposedly training manager. What a joke. Just a floor sweeper. Anyway, after four three months, the manager and myself came to a mutual agreement that that wasn't the right job for me, so I came out here to Frog Hall and started an apprenticeship, an engineering apprenticeship with the company was Thomas Bolton's and Sons, they were copper, copper manufacturers, copper pipe, copper wire, electrical connections, anything made of copper, Thomas Bolton and Sons, they tended to make them. And we'll have a little bit of a look at what, what's left of the factory, which isn't much to be honest, these days.
just take a wander across in front of us to the canal. If you can't see it from here, but the canal is just over there. So there we have the Calden Canal. It's almost at the at its furthest extent here. It does carry on through the wee tunnel over on the right and then about 50 yards beyond and there's a basin big enough to turn 70 foot narrowboats around in. Uh, it's quite a nice walk. So we've got the Calden Canal in front of us and over to the left through the fencing used to be Thomas Bolton's and Sons as I say when I came to start my apprenticeship back in 1968. Goodness gracious me that's some time ago. Right I'll switch off for now and I'll see you in a few minutes. So a float. Now just in case you can hear me, we're on board Flotsam 2. Flotsam 1 having been a little sailing boat. The reason the name came about was when I was paddling in the sea on my days off up at Gairlock in Scotland. The fishermen the commercial fishermen used to make a bit of fun of it, to be honest. And one day one of them said, do you know what we call sea kayaks in this fishing trade? I said, go on. We call them flocks and, in other words, floating rubbish. So I thought I'd use it as a name. Flotsam 2. It's a feather craft. A feather craft's big kahuna. <laughs> big kahuna, what a name. And it's four years not more since I last used it, so I was a bit rushed to putting it together. But this is the Calden Canal, heading away from the terminus effectively. This is a winding hole on the right here. You can see it, it's where 70 foot boats can actually turn around. They need to put these in every now and then. And everything to the left of us over the fence is what used to be Thomas Bolton's Copper Works. This is where I used to come for a walk during lunchtime, back in the late 60s. There have been problems with this section of the canal over the years. The, uh, the banking has washed away a few times and it's had to be closed and, draw and rebuilt. That's what the steel pilings are in there for to our left to prevent it from happening again, hopefully. It doesn't get a lot of use with narrow boats. It's a shame really because it's a lovely stretch of canal. It's just that it's dead end. A lot of people like to do a circular trip. It didn't used to end at Frog Hall. The canal used to carry on almost as far as you talked to it. But of course what put an end to it was the railway. Which in turn went to Utoxeter, but that doesn't anymore. The railway now comes as far as Frog Hall. And that's where it ends. This is a newly repaired piece of banking. This has been repaired since I was last down here. <clears throat> now that's flots and bits of wood floating in the, in the canal. However, I've been called a lot worse names over the years. Flots and indeed. can't smell them at the minute but the white flowers to the left that's the wild garlic it's quite a heady aroma usually now we're on the Calden Canal as I say but the river river Churnit as I was saying earlier runs through this valley as well the journey to the river journey itself is down below us on the left 
and the railway line's down to our left as well. And now that we can't see anything, there's actually a train coming. Although I think it's a diesel. Now oh, the train's coming as a flipping wooden boat to that to run us down. worth going to any trouble for because it's only a diesel. We're shunting carriages around ready for the weekend. If they're operating this weekend that is. Now you might have noticed, you might have worked out from the photographs, the sequential, for that's a good word isn't it, sequential photographs, putting the, the kayak together, it's basically a frame of aluminium tubing which is pushed inside a rubberized fabric skin and then stretch the frame stretched to tighten the skin and then I've got what I call inflatable sponsons either side that stretches out, out sideways and give me a little bit more stability. If you like. Kingfisher, I think. Yes, I've seen a kingfisher for quite a long time. Churnit, the river Churnit is a tributary, another tributary of the Dove. As with the manifold, it runs into the it runs into the, the Dove in the in the vicinity of the town of Utoxeter, or as we locals call it, Uchita. Quite a gothic design as you can see. I'll just paddle to the side so I can hold myself steady. I'm going to try something here. And this bridge is called, well it's Bridge 53, called the Canal Bridge 53 officially, but its local name Everybody knows it as such. Cherry Eye Bridge. The reason for that is that this is the bridge that the, the iron miners used to cross on the way home from work. The iron mines are up on the right hand side. And um, at the end of the shift, they come down. And we know what coal miners look like the black, or black rings around their eyes. Because iron ore is red, their eyes were red, almost bloodshot, and red rings around their eyes from the iron ore as they crossed this bridge going over from home. People saw them coming over the bridge, and it was known as cherry eye, the, the, the colour of the, their eyes and around their eyes. It was known as cherry eye. So this was a bridge that came across, so this was, became known as cherry eye bridge. Completely utterly useless information, but it makes it interesting.
those people walking the cooked today. I was saying about the kayak, it's um, what it's made of, yes. But it's made of the company's gone gone out of business now. It didn't go bust. It just closed down. And there's a company in Canada called Feathercraft. Made a range of holding uh, kayaks. Very, very good kayaks as well. It's a shame they've gone closed down because it was a good product. Never mind. At least I got mine. I'm making good use of it now since 15, 16 years ago. And bought it for the US segment. The skin was good for eight years. <laughs> Still going strong. left a bolt and started to appear. <clears throat> so we're approaching our disembarkation point. When we get there I'll switch off the camera and divest myself of all my accoutrements to make it easy for me to alight gracefully in the car. Gracefully and I just don't want any witnesses, that's all. One to our left is a working boat, built as a working boat as well, you can tell from its hull. And then these are all liverboard boats or cruising boats. You can tell the ones that were built as cruising boats because they've got what's known as a cruising. A cruising stern, in other words, a big seating area at the stern, whereas Working boats have working stern, in other words, very, very small platform for the skipper, if you want to call him that, the boatman, or the helmsman to stand and carry out his duties. Anyway, here we are back at our starting point from this afternoon. So, like I said, I'll switch the camera off. Whilst I attempt to extricate myself from this, this car. Really enjoyed doing this this afternoon. Been a long time coming. See you shortly. So we're back. At least I hope we are. Kayak's taken apart. 
stashed in the sidecar we can have another look at a little bit more of the Churnit Valley like I said we can't follow the river very much but we can drop into the valley these are new buildings on the right the brick building over to the right there that was part of Bolton's where I used to work but these more modern steel buildings well who knows what get what they get up in there they're military suppliers military suppliers yeah that can cover a multitude of sins so we're heading up uh, out of the valley now up to the village of Whiston Another one of our lovely bendy roads. to the right here's the Churnit Valley like I say we can't get to, down to the river bank very much so uh, just the, now and again we can drop down to it it's a pleasant enough river it's just not as well known as the manifold and the dove that's all but then they're both in the Peak District and this one isn't Take the shortcut down to Oakamore. Sort of road. This is coming, coming into Oakamore now. One of the reasons I wanted to come to Oakamore was because, yes, the Boltons at Frog Hall was where I started my apprenticeship. But in actual fact, Boltons had another factory here at Oakamore. By the time I started work, it had long since gone. But when you think that these two, these two factories, engineering factories, making copper, com copper and brass components, very very busy during the war years very important munitions factories and you can you can imagine that once the Germans got to know about them they wanted to bomb them never hit them once and one of the reasons is that both factories were 
not quite hidden by the trees but protected by very forested sides to the valley and they never managed to hit them. But like I say, Bolton's had two factories within, within a short distance of each other really. And this is Oakamore so we'll take a little run across across the bridge over the, the Churnit. The canal has long since gone, it's over to our right. So that's the Churnit that we're just crossing at the moment. And the, the parkland on the left here is where the Bolton's factory was situated. I can remember coming here as a lad and there was the railway sidings. It was quite a, a sizable set of railway sidings that were here. They were still here but all the buildings were gone. So that's Oakamore. We'll turn around here and make our way back. Of course, Oakamore being in the bottom of the valley, you can't get away from Oakamore without going up a, up a steepish hill. The village you come to is Cotton, very small village is Cotton. This is where my wife's family originate from. Walton Towers is just two or three miles over to our right. I'm not going anywhere near that place. It's not really my favourite place anymore. Clear off your pair of pheasants. I'm always wary when we see pheasants at the side of the road. They come over as being suicidal, the other pheasants. They're responsible more than once smashed windscreen, in my experience. But in the coach driving industry we have a, we have a theory about the, the pheasant. We don't think the pheasant is quite as thick as it comes over. See, the pheasant is not a wild bird, it's a game bird, being bred to be shot. And what we think is the pheasant knows exactly what the future holds and holds in store for it, or maybe doesn't. So they sit and stand on the side of the road and think, why wait? Just jump in front of the first vehicle that comes. So maybe they're not as daft as they come, come over.
this brings us to Cauldon Low. This is effectively where the Cauldon Canal, where we've been today, gets its name from. Cauldon, Cauldon Low and Cauldon, the village of Cauldon, are surrounded by quarries, limestone quarries. And one of the goods that was taken away on the canal, on the canal from Oakamore and further along when it was still running was stone from the quarries, of course. That's our tip for today, ladies and gents. Go straight home today. I'm going to call on a friend who just happens to run a pub. I can think of worse places than end of video. The front door of a pub. I'll go and say hello to my mate Dan. Here at the yew tree at Calden, beautiful pub is the yew tree. Thanks for your time. See you next time. Cheers now.